Welcome back to another episode of Chris Dyer's Creative Friends, a super awesome podcast show where me, your artist friend Chris Dyer, talks to all his super awesome artistic friends. Today, I'm in the Tampa Bay interviewing my artist friend Sebastian Coolidge, who's a very unique individual artist, muralist, painter, fashion designer, inventor, and just a different kind of dude, you know? Uh, he's got humor and originality as part of his soul expression, and I think you'll really enjoy this conversation we had recently. Enjoy! Woo! Between the women and a man, Chris Dyer and his creative friends, darling. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm about to yeah. start this interview with Chris Dyer. He came through the studio, Woo. and we also got Pauline in the back here on the cameras behind the scenes. So let's kick this baby off. Chris, you have anything you want to say? Uh, this is going to be fun. Yow! You heard it here first. It's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Sebastian, for having me over. Yes, dude. Thanks for house. coming over, man. Yeah, no problem. This it's is really, great. It's nice to go out for uh, to Trips Diner yeah. this morning. Tampa, Sem what is it, Seminole or? Seminole Heights, Seminole Heights. Tampa, yeah. yeah. So. This nice is like to have you in Tampa. Yeah, thank you. This is kind of like the, the cool neighborhood of Tampa, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah, and you? Well, we're here now, so. What? Well, we're here, so. We're you here know now, it's so cool. now it's gotta fucking be cool. <laughs> um, you just moved to Tampa from St. Petersburg, Correct. but you've gone back and forth throughout the years. Where are you from originally? So actually, I'm originally from, I was, grew up in Kansas City. Okay. So it's like the middle of the map, Missouri. Uh, I moved out here when I was about 18 and lived with my aunt, who was actually also from Kansas City, but she moved out here. She works in like a school district and whatnot. So that was kind of my chance to kind of get out of Kansas City and like, you know, get away from the riffraff and like the life I was kind of like, you know, into just like, you know. What year was that? Uh, that was, I would say, 2009. Okay. 2008, maybe. How was uh, Tampa and St. Petersburg those days? Well, so I was in St. Pete then, and I was in St. Pete all the way up until really a few months ago when I moved here. Um, St. Pete was a lot different. It's definitely changed a lot. It's grown up a lot. A lot more condos and you know new places popping up where like downtown before was like all right it was cute but it wasn't like how it is now it's definitely the whole landscape's changed uh -huh. in a matter of years like wow. big big change how come <laughs> i think you know a lot of it's probably due to the popularity of like the art and nice. people people like me like going out painting big murals and you know making like the scenery like really fun and enjoyable for people to be walking around in. And yeah. now that uh, St. Pete is kind of like growing into something beautiful, you move back to Tampa. How come? Well, you know, that, that is an interesting question. I guess, like, I'm a kind of like, you know, I like to just do, like, different things than what I see, you know, normally, like, you know, the average person will be doing. So, like, once they get, like, real popular, then I'm like, I was going to Tampa and like, you know, kind of lay low out here for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But is there like more jobs in Tampa since it's a bigger city? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it's really like the same people that, we, you know, would contact me and same people still contact me. It's not like any different, really. I really haven't even had like, you know, besides this job I'm doing right now for uh, it's this group called the uh, Moist. It's like moist critical it's like a whole like, collective of like gamers and like youtube like they're the first people that really even hit me up in tampa since i moved here uh-huh the rest of the stuff's been kind of like things i already had going on or you know connections that are unrelated 
do you think as an artist it, it matters where you live? Like, for example, you moved to Tampa, so you got a big Tampa client. Does that matter? Or with the internet, you could have gotten the same job living in St. Pete? Or perhaps because you moved here and now you're a Tampa artist, that influenced the clientele being attracted to you? Yes and no. I would say, obviously, with the internet age, you can, like, you know, have influence, you know, amongst all types of people that you would never normally see on the street or whatever. But yeah, it helps to like, you know, locally to have, you you know, people be able to hit you up that are in your town and living by. So yeah, mm -hmm. it but definitely you, helps. But you like this area in general. Yeah, yeah. Tampa what? safety is almost the same kind of thing to me. Yeah. You know, the whole like Tampa Bay area. It's, it's like, half an hour away. It's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah. It's what just across like, the bridge. What do you like about this area? This area? You're one of, one of the people who like influenced me to move <laughs> here. Like when I, I when I came here last Christmas, you yeah. invited me out for breakfast with that uh, guy Steven also. Yeah. And and you're like, so you're considering moving around here? It's like, yeah, it's a possibility. We'll see. And then you even started sending me real estate postings, like check out this house with a swimming pool. Yeah. You could have a swimming pool, and I'm like, I could have a swimming pool. <laughs> Not that I bought a house with a swimming pool in the end, but <laughs> yeah, I actually bought you floaties. Uh, you bought me floaties? Yeah, I didn't. I never get. You didn't get the swimming pool, so I was like, ah, I just kept them. You know, I actually okay. ended up taking them back to the store. Oh no! Yeah. But uh, I do hope that one day I can <laughs> dig a hole in my backyard and, and put some plastic on it or whatever, yeah. some tile, and have a swimming pool to refresh yeah. myself. But once again, what? Uh, why do you love this area? You've been here for many years. So. Yeah, you know what? This area is. It's very charming, I guess, from where I. Where I came from, like Kansas City, is also like a you know it's a it's a cute town or whatever. But when I moved here, the St. Pete specifically, it was very like small town, but it also felt like it was kind of in a big town because of Tampa. But it was like really clean and you know like just pleasant to be around. I really like the whole vibe of it. You know, coming from like Kansas City was a little bit of like a not like dirtier town, but definitely like Midwest kind of dirtier town so i moved here it was like i don't know like just like a nice like clean Feels area fresh, i right? liked it yeah, yeah maybe like, the ocean you get the ocean breeze you know being able to go to the ocean was something like that was you know that was only like a vacation thing up until you know what you live here you're like i can go to the beach any day and then you never go but like so i started going to the beach a lot you know with my family and stuff like that uh -huh. you've been to the beaches very briefly not yeah in, that's how uh, it is once you're like have the access yeah, well, you I don't hope, go for some reason. <laughs> like, well, it's also been winter and it's right. like, you know, it's not it's not like cold by any stretch, but it's also not like the hottest day where it's like, you got to go to the beach and jump in the yeah. ocean. But we hope to uh, get there eventually and take advantage of it. And I'm super excited. But I, I can't say I do feel the ocean breeze where I where I bought. Wait, actually, I do want to ask you what made you because you kind of already had the inclination to move to St. Pete before we talked. Yeah, I think I just kind of was pushing it a little bit because I was like, yeah, move, yeah, yeah, yeah. come be in this stuff. Uh -huh. But what kind of like pushed you initially? Like, what did you like see or hear? Like, what was it that Well, I, ne I needed to find a place in the United States where I felt comfortable living. And okay. a lot of it is not my style. But I've been coming to Florida in general since I was like fucking five years old. Yeah. Uh, it's got like a Latino vibe to like it. Miami. Right. Yeah. But then when I go to Miami for the Basils, it's so fucking crazy and chaotic right. that I was like, I couldn't live there. But maybe somewhere else in Florida. And then I remember going to, uh, to, to uh, coming here, uh, Tampa and, and St. Pete in 2015 before a Basel and hanging out with Jacob Hill and other friends. Mm -hmm. And rem uh, going to the uh, Salvador Dali Museum, I just remember like, oh, that place was Florida and it was chill. And I hear it's artsy, so let's go and check it out. And that's why I went to connect with my cousin last uh, Christmas. And that's when we hanged out. And I was like, yeah. oh, that, that looks like a really nice place. And it's not too expensive yet. So yeah. yeah. So thanks for the, cool. the support cool. with that. So right before me moving, there was this whole hurricane thing. And then I'm checking into your Instagram post, and you posted about this spider infestation, uh, spider infestation, infestation <laughs> on the beach. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? 
there's uh, like millions of spiders. That was right before you moved? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I was like, is this a joke? Is this for real? Please tell me about the spider, <laughs> spider infestation so of St. Pete. The spider infestation was really wild because a lot of people don't know about it. Like outside of, you know, like St. Pete or Tampa area. So basically like one day I, I went to the beaches. I didn't know about it. It's one of those things I feel like the government tries to hide. Is it real? Because it's, yeah, it's very, very strange. I think it's a lot of like overseas, like China, the factories produce a lot of, um, you know, like dust and pollution and stuff. And with that comes these like crazy spider infestations. And so like they dump a lot of them, they clean out these warehouses and dump them into the ocean. And then somehow they like kind of like raft their way over to the beaches. And when I went to the beach one day, it was like, as far as you can see, my favorite beach, I'm not going to say it because I want to blow up the spot, but it's like covered in like spiders. And they're like, it looked like human hair was like wrapped around them. And I guess it's it somehow like. Uh, with they made the, enough web to with, use as a raft? No, with like the laws they have, I think a lot of people have to cut their hair in China. So they like also dump that with the spiders. And so they get wrapped up in it. And I met this guy and he was like, He's like, uh, if you like know the right program, you collect buckets of it. And for every pound of it, they'll give you like $10 or something because it takes a lot, you know, dry to make a pound. So uh, we started. So this is for real. I thought you no, were just. No, it's all bullshit. Uh... It was all a joke. It was, a, it was total bullshit. I was oh my God, you had me going on there. It's like, what? This is for real? Because like, I was like, no, this has to. But uh, you had me like. <laughs> why, why, why you play with my emotions, Sebastian? <laughs> so good. Wait, can you guys run that video? Is that yeah, possible? Yeah. Pauline, yeah. Pauline, run that clip real quick. The storms have washed up billions of spiders. Some are saying into the quadrillions, wrapped in human hair from overseas here in Saint Petersburg, Florida. People don't know what to do. Um, this guy was saying that if you, they're paying people right now $10 a pound to come down to the beach and just pick up like buckets or bags, just fill them up with as many spiders as you can and try to help clean up the beaches. I talked to some of the locals. Uh, this guy right here, he's been here for over 50 years. He said he's never made so much money on spiders. <laughs> Paulina will, will put the B-roll to this, but... Um, <laughs> Well, um, it was a total joke. I just wanted to mess with people, but it was this like weird, like uh, type of like coral or something that was washing up and like covering the beaches, which it still looked really messed up. Right, like, right, the, right. The beaches were like destroyed with this like stuff. But it goes to show that <laughs> if you like do some kind of uh, news reporting, you could really yeah. convince people of any like narrative. Right. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go in and go, go into your art very soon. But okay. what's your correlation between uh, humor or well, that's tricking yeah. somebody or right. or, you know, like getting some kind of weird upside down hook, even your signature, you, you write Sebastian and your second name, it's upside down. Like, uh, I know the thing is, is like, it's really all kind of my art, like even the whole spider infestation thing, which is not something I that type of prank is not a typical thing I do a lot. But even that I consider to be like an art piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, you're just expressing yourself yeah. through any way possible. Right, so a lot of it's humor, you know, I had to do it like, even this like funny stuff, like, you know, if you look at like, maybe like older painting, I do like also like classic type of like oil paintings or, you know, like, you know, but I just like to do like funny things, you know, just stuff to like take people away from like what they're maybe normally experiencing and just like have like a laugh or maybe invoke like a funny thought or just intrigue someone into thinking something, you know? Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of your paintings are kind of like also like plays of shapes, you know, mm -hmm. like a guy running this way, but another guy's guy running inside him yeah. and just like, like uh, provoking, right? Kind of like a like a MC Escher, yeah, also like uh, perspectives, right? Yeah. Right, and uh, like just seeing diff things from a different perspective, yeah. which I think is, I would say, your strength. Like you're mm. a different kind of alien. I like to play. Yeah. Yeah. And turn I like that fun, you know. Turn yeah. things up in their heads and uh, perhaps even get people out of their comfort zones. Right. Does that ever play out uh, the opposite way that you intended? 
Oh, does it play out the opposite way intended? I like when you're trying to like, you way? know, like for example, when we met at Art With Me Festival, <laughs> I can't remember what you told me, but I was like, that guy is a little bit of an asshole. I'm going to stay away from him. Yeah. But you were just kind of like yanking my chain. Right. Thing is, I didn't know you yet. I didn't know yeah. if you were yanking my chain right. in a friendly way like two buddies would do. Yeah. But then you didn't know me yet. It's like, what is this guy saying this thing to me? What the fuck's going on here? Um, like, but I'm a chill dude, so I'll be like, oh, whatever. I'll just keep on painting. Yeah. Does ever being all like, you know, like, like, fought back to you. Yeah, yeah, like for sure. There's definitely like, sometimes the people interpret my like playfulness like that because I do kind of like, do keep a straight face and I do like to like mess with people like that. So it was funny actually, cause um, we showed up at this like art with me thing and it's like these artists, I didn't really know any of the artists painting. This is all kind of my first time meeting that my girlfriend, Rayma was like, Oh, Chris Dyer, she knew you from like the festival because she used to like vend at festivals and stuff. So like, I didn't know, like, I guess maybe that's more the circuit you're kind of like tied to the community. But I did, I just didn't know who you were. And I was like, who's Chris Dyer? She's like, no, he's like big and was like really hyping you up. And I was like, let's go fuck with him. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, let's go fuck with that dude. <laughs> so that's kind of like my way of really like breaking the ice with people. And I was like, yeah. maybe he'll get it. And then we'll be like, you know, have like a good kind of be fun to yeah, like yeah, mess yeah, with yeah. him. But if not, then maybe he'll just think I'm weird and maybe we'll just iron that out later, which we kind of did. Like, yeah. I think we kind of ironed it I out I myself later. didn't know m many of the artists of that festival other than Claudia LaBianca. La yeah, I didn't know Claudia. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't know Claudia. Uh, but that I did it. not really know Ocean Man. Right, uh, me neither. Or yeah. Monique or who yeah. else was there. There was a couple other artists that were there that painted before, so I didn't get to meet them in right. person. So. Yeah, they're all really good people though. And, yeah. and Jacob, I think, put that together. Jacob he's Hale. always put together like really good stuff too. That's a great dude. I like that uh -huh. dude a lot. Have you seen him recently, Jacob Hill? I haven't seen him recently. Yeah, we do like talk every once in a while. And, you know, he's yeah. always like, you know, he's always coming up with something, you know, to like get something popping. I love that type of personality. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. kind-hearted dude. Um, so let's talk about your art. What okay. I know you got different kinds of art. Uh, you're a painter, you are a sculptor, a fashion designer, muralist. Did any of those arts is like your main thing or did anything come first and mm -hmm. something else come from it? Like, tell me about your art expressions and the different mediums that you use. Yeah, so I guess it kind of started, um, I've kind of told this story before. I'm just going to jump it back real quick to the dawn of time when I was like little or just drawing on the wall. Sure. You know, and stuff like that. Please. And like Take it where you my want. My mom had got me like, uh, you know, like do the Ninja Turtle stickers. I would draw around them. And then like, uh, you know, just growing up, I would just be drawing all the time to kind of like, you know, maybe take myself away from like whatever was happening. And I would just find myself drawing. And then in high school, I got into like, making t-shirts with like drawing like painting designs on them mm -hmm. and like sewing like little pockets on you know just kind of making like funky stuff so it was kind of like you know drawing always will come first i think but fashion was kind of like i want to be able to like wear my art and mm -hmm. like have it with me all the time so fashion was kind of like a natural art form to me so and then i full started, self expression yeah so then i started when i came to saint pete i met this really awesome lady kimberly hendrix who has now passed away, but she was kind of like my first like mentor in like the fashion world. And I was showing her like a lot of my designs and she had like a really great, like successful like fashion brand. And she was like, gave me this idea. She's like, we well, love to like paint and draw and all this stuff. She's like, you should like take these designs you're doing and paint them on walls and have that be like your lookbook for people to like look at your fashion and just have people in like blank clothing that you're shooting. She's like, it's this like really bizarre concept of like not actually showing the clothes. And I was like, dude, that sounds fucking wild. Oh, like I've never seen anything like that. You're trying to sell clothes, but there's nothing on the clothes. It's on the background. It's on the wall. Yeah. So uh, me and my buddy, uh, Elijah, he was like, he's helping me. We're painting these like big like pieces of basically what these like shirts were that I was designing on walls. And then uh, people started kind of seeing them around town, like St. Pete, and then they started like hiring me to do like murals for them. And then I got kind of like caught up in this whole like, cause that's when murals were kind of really becoming a big thing. This was like 
2011 times when they were first like the mural craze started like popping off again mm -hmm. 2010 2011 yeah and so then i started doing like murals and stuff and then that, uh, that all kind of intertwined like that uh-huh yeah so did you stop doing fashion to do murals or you did it parallel yeah i kind of did both i mean i did definitely cut back on fashion a lot because the mural game was just like providing every you know means i needed to be like an artist so like i I was working like little jobs and stuff and I quit all these things and just was like, I'm gonna make it being an artist. Like, I don't care what I have to do. Like, I don't care if I have to be homeless. I'm gonna like do what I have to do to like get art out there and have this be my life. Like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, any means necessary. Has it been worth it? It's been definitely worth it, man. Like, have you slept on the streets or have you always succeeded in the end? Yeah, I mean, I definitely like did some like staying at friends' places, that type of like, you know, like crashing places, definitely for sure. I had like a fair amount of friends that were like, you know, letting me stay with them and stuff like that. But yeah, it eventually like worked out into where now I can just like do my art and which was kind of like a crazy concept for me. I don't know how you got into it or like what caused you to do it, but like, did anyone ever tell you like it was an option to like just be an artist and do what you want? Like, how did that happen for you? Because I'm really interested in... Thanks, he, thanks for making questions. No, no, he asked me about my... <laughs> <laughs> um, I always was an artist, but the adults, as much as they thought it was neat that I did art, never said, like, you should work as an artist. They were more like, oh, maybe you should do a job that involves art, like architecture or, uh, you know, cartoon right. animation, yeah. where uh, skilled artists can be hired by a big company yeah. Uh, but it was never like, oh, you can do art and go out and sell it. Even when I went to school for years, I was like, okay, I'm learning how to do art, but I got no clue how I'm going to like fucking make a living out of this thing. That's why I got, I stayed in school for like eight years. And, uh, and then I just fucking went out there and put, fucking threw my dice on 20 tables and saw what stuck. And some things worked out. Yeah. But I had to figure it out. This is like 2004 when I started my career. And yep, some things worked out like skateboard yeah. graphics and eventually murals, clothing brand. It's had its good times and its bad times. Yeah. So let's go back to you. Tell yeah. me about your fashion. So did you make a clothing brand per se or mm -hmm. were you just doing like limited edition uh, hood couture objects mm -hmm. for wear? Like how do you go about it? Yeah, definitely I'm still working on that. Uh -huh. my, my fashion line right now, I thought I was getting off to like finally like a good start because i've done it the wrong way so many times especially when it comes to like the specialized like patterns and like like high-end stuff like beyond like graphic clothes like shirts and stuff mm -hmm. so i finally like was got connected with you know through some people to like a manufacturing place like a factory in uh, pakistan to like make my clothes that like i had i've had for years i mean i've been sitting on i just keep designing and designing clothes and like didn't have the right way to like you know maybe knowledge to like go about how to do it and mm -hmm. like you know design it and then manufacture it and then sell it at like a a cost that wasn't like a high-end one-off boutique cost which was like kind of like what i started doing mm -hmm. so i finally got off to the right start and it was like right before covid this is like pre-covid mm -hmm. and like sent all these patterns been working with like you know my seamstress like miranda this other guy um Matthew and like sent all these like patterns and stuff to Pakistan and started finally like having them make samples and send them back and like I'm like all right I'm finally on the right track here and then like COVID hit and I guess like it wasn't too bad for Florida but I guess definitely like the rest of the world and especially like Pakistan like these guys are messaging me like dude like we're not only like not working really right now he's like it's like so it's like a war zone over here. He's like, it's not like people aren't coming to the factory to work right now. Uh -huh. So like it got really held up. I'm yeah. actually in my process of getting all my samples back from them. Okay. Like years later, cause uh -huh. they've just been like- Before they rip them off. Just stopped working. Oh yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> and that's a whole other thing is like, I kind of like rushed my whole clothing brand and everything back in like 2015. I did these shows in like LA and New York and was like, I'm just gonna like make you know, like a sample run of all my stuff and have these shows without really like any knowledge of like where I would do after that, after I showed all these people. And so I had these like, you know, I had these shows and they're they really cool and I had fun. I had a show in St. Pete 
And then like, probably like, it was like six months later, uh, I'm getting like messages from people and my DMs like showing me these like Netflix shows that are like, look like my designs of shirts. They end up being like a few different like, like three different shows on Netflix, like stealing my clothes. Like my designs are like clearly my designs ripped off. Uh huh. So like, I found a lot of ways of like how not to do stuff. Right. So I'm still kind of like developing that. But I mean, it's like you want to be original, and you want to show the worthy originality. Yeah. But if you show your cards too soon. They can't imitate that shit in one second. They got like, the whole, yeah, right, like infrastructure I'm, production. I'm yeah. not not even like a designer, but like for example, I've done some like you know army jackets You've with patches in a cool, yeah. interesting way. And then all of a sudden, I see that in China they had replicated the jacket, even with my art on the back, hand painted. As like, what the fuck, you know? Like that was what? a one-off that I made for myself, and now they're selling it in in China. What the fuck's going on? No, so you've so been ripped off hard. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So tell me, what interesting uh, designs did you make? Like, what, what, what's something that comes to mind where I was like, oh, I invented this, this pattern or this thing, and I was really proud of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to reveal your cards too soon or. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, those are already designers. I'm not going to say who, because they know who they are. Uh, like, already kind of like trying to. Um, the best way I can say it is kind of like do, they're trying to like do what I do before I can do it. Right. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, so that's like, why I don't I show sketches anymore. There's some big designers out there. I hope you're watching this motherfucker. Because <laughs> like uh, basically it was like, uh, the one thing that like really hit me when I first started designing was like to do like a face silhouette in the design of like the button line of a shirt so instead of like a straight button line, it would be like this face outline and have like kind of like the eye be like a pocket. Uh -huh. And that was like, I was like, dude, I gotta do this whole button up like line, like collection. But since then it's been like ripped off by like, you know, numerous Netflix, like, you know, probably stylists or designers, other fashion designers that are like right now, like mm -hmm. still making stuff that looks like that. So, you know, these are all things that I guess like when I do finally get my shit together and have like the production like proper, like everyone will see like where it really came from. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, I have like the, I have everything historically to back up that, you know, I came up with that shit and right. they've, they've acknowledged it too. Like some people have, you know, give me shout outs. Like, you know, they got inspired by me or whatever. But who wants to go to court and be like, Hey, I'm, I know. it's like, it's like for what, unless you were like ready to like invest like hard onto making a big line. I probably could have got some money out of like Netflix or something. Yeah. But I, I'm just not that type of dude. It sucks to go and fight for yeah. all that shit. I understand. Like, I get chances to really fight people who rip me off all the time, and I'm like, ugh, let the losers keep them, the whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather I just have this, a peaceful life. I heard this line one time with this, uh, this rapper currency. He said, uh, he said something like, a couple of nugs is nothing to the grower. And uh, that's where I was like, well, like, people rip me off, but like, I like can make this shit up. Like, you, all you can do is like, emulate the style that like I but I can keep making it like I'll I keep like coming that. up with ideas dude right yeah. I like that if you're abundant even if people come to take a little bite yeah. of your of your abundance still you you got so much more coming through and it's not ain't no fang yeah. you know like I like that saying you know yeah. a couple of nugs ain't nothing for a grower Perfect. yeah exactly I'm gonna yeah. keep that one and that one inspired me too you know the simple little like dumb things like that will like inspire me I'm like yeah you know it is like fuck it uh-huh totally so you did fashion design and that kind of sprouted out the murals mm -hmm. did you get into muraline or were you also doing canvas paintings or canvas paintings came later or at the same time? Yeah, I guess it was about the same time. Mm -hmm. I started doing like um, little shows, like canvas paintings, yeah, murals. It was kind of like, it was all the same thing to me, except, you know, one's bigger, one's like smaller. But also different mediums, I imagine. Like uh, the canvases I saw of yours at Modern Art Theory Gallery, that gallery's name always is that. yeah it was jacob yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah jacob used to work with them now yeah. it's anders and rohan shout outs um but i saw your art in that gallery and i think that was acrylics right that was actually oil 
Oils. Yeah, it was okay. Oils, yeah. Cool. So you've been playing with different uh, yeah. mediums, and you try to sell the canvases in galleries, or do you have more luck online? Man, I don't. I don't really. I guess try to sell stuff as much as maybe I'll let other people try to sell it, like Jacob or you know other art galleries that want to mm -hmm. you know sell it. I just kind of like make stuff and kind of put it out there. You just like to make it. Yeah. And if it sells, cool. If not. But I like, honestly, I, I like keeping my stuff. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, you know how it is. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, a lot of things, like, even like this or, like, you know, these pieces, like, I like my stuff. So, like, if I don't sell it, I'm kind of, like, happy. Uh huh. Like, you know, it's good to get, like, the money from it and live off of it. But also, like, you kind of develop these connections with your pieces when you make them. And then by the time, like, you're done, you're like, I want to like keep this. Like I don't. Yeah, wanna, no, I totally you know, understand like, that. I, 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 I love I, this piece. <laughs> like, not only I don't want to sell my piece many times, so I, I, I put outrageous prices. Yeah. But I, but I, sure. buy, I, I buy them back many times too. Yeah. I was like, oh, that piece that I really liked, and yeah, like getting the money for it helped me put a down deposit for something. But if I can get it back, I will. Yeah. And then it's back. It's my energy's back with me. It's like, oh. Yeah. So, so I totally get it. But at the same time, we got bills to pay. And, you yeah. know, there's that balance of the artist that, you know, we didn't start doing art for making money. Right. But you got to afford sure. the fucking yeah. lifestyle to make this art. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I, w I would think, like, what? Uh, Florida in general is quite good for selling art. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, especially if you're putting it out there, like, kind of like how we are. Like, I was back in, you know, when I first started, I was just, like, doing as many murals as I could in public, and then people were, like, hitting me up and, like, seeing it everywhere. And it's really just, like, a free billboard. Uh-huh. If you think about it like that, it's almost, like, worth it just to do free pieces. Right. You know? It's publicity, and yeah. it gets your art out there. And the more you do it, the more you'll be asked to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I had people come up to me. Like salty, I remember this one like salty older guy who's like in a wheelchair and I was doing this piece over on Central in St. Pete. And I was like up on the second story. It was like one of the, uh, where there's like an upper part of the building and you can stand on the roof and do like the upper part. And he was under me and he came under and he's like, I see what you're doing. And I was like, what? And he's like, nah, I see what you're doing. He's like, you're just doing all these like free pieces everywhere to like promote your art. He's like, you're just like, getting out of like paying for billboards and shit and we like looked at it like i was being like shady yeah. and i was like bitch i'm like out here like giving people free art too i'm not just like right. doing it like it's some selfish reason i'm just like nah, yeah. i want my art to like well it's a win-win situation yeah i was like dude it's good for you like, i'm having fun people want to see you. like it's all good for everybody like right yeah so you do feel like uh giving to a community and doing some free murals actually ends up getting you some good contracts yeah, for sure. Nice. Yeah. Tell me about your uh, your technique, because um, I like your colors. <laughs> about what? what? Were you looking at this? <laughs> well, I, from the first time I saw you painting, I was like, oh, this motherfucker has a really interesting line work. OK. Like, yeah. even here, like, can I even call this line work or dot work? So yeah, how do you do this? Is it a specific cap? Is it a way of holding the cap? Tell me your secrets. I mean, this is really <laughs> like, this was definitely inspired by like Os Gemos. Os Gemelos. Say, say Os Gemios. Gemelos. The twins. In Spanish it's Gemelos, but I don't know is how to say it in Portuguese. Gemelos. I've actually never known how to say their name. So did I move out of frame? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, them and like um cranio was the other guy i yeah. seen like doing these like really also brazilian fine work and i was just like oh yeah that's like a great way to like kind of almost replicate what to me felt like this sketchbook kind of look that i really liked where uh -huh. like i would be drawing my you know obviously like designing murals and sketchbooks is like how i started before ipad and everything so like that real fine line almost like scratchy look it's right. like how I drew stuff, and yeah. when I was translating it, it wasn't translating how I liked it when I was spray painting. Because it's so thick and strong. Yeah, it was so thick. And then I saw these guys like doing these fiddle stuff. Like when I first went to Basel, they had a piece right there on like what was like second. Uh, you saw them in person? Uh, I, well, I just saw the the uh, art, the Gemos piece uh -huh. that was like right. It was like two thousand, maybe like 
14 basils, maybe 15, and they were like, maybe 12. Uh -huh. They were like right. It was like right on that little main strip by right. like uh, the basil walls. They had like yeah. that piece. Windwood walls. And that's the first time I got to walk up on their piece. And I was like, damn, it's like these crazy spittle lines. And I really kind of like bit that. And I was like, damn, I'm about to like do some shit like that. This looks way cooler than like this well, thick fat line that well, I feel like was ruining my designs a lot. I've seen other Brazilians use that really fine line. So I wouldn't say you bit it. You just took one kind of line work and did yeah. your own thing with it. Right. But what do you use? What are those uh, caps that have the little tube at the end? Like the, uh, the mosquito? People call mosquito cap. Oh, yeah? I don't use this. No? I just use whatever. You can make this spittle situation with, with, with any, a normal cap? With any cap. Uh-huh. I mean, some of them do better. Like this one, I don't even know what cap that was. But a lot of times I'll use like a fat cap. Like a, you gotta you gotta have a really strong finger for this because you gotta be like just pressing enough that something's happening, yeah. but so little yeah. that you know that any anything else will actually make the whole fucking cap work as it should. Explode out. Like I'm yeah. surprised you didn't fuck up at any point. I mean, maybe I did. I might have fixed it. I don't know. I don't see like well, any points where you like exploded at least in this piece. <laughs> But anyways, props to you on uh, on you. I, I I never really dare to do a messy because I, I, I with my murals I really want them really clean. I know your stuff's really clean. Uh, and I'm never satisfied. I'm always like, oh, I need another five to ten years to get it as clean as I'd like to. Right. That's but, how it is with spray paint. Right. It took me like five years uh -huh. to like paint how I kind of wanted to paint with it. Right. Is that how it was with you? How long have you been using spray paint? Um, I'd say like 15 years now. Yeah. Yeah, which I feel is still, I'm, I still feel new at spray paint uh, compared to somebody like my brother who's been doing it since the 90s. Okay. Uh, who has like 10 to 20 years over me. Yeah. So if he wants to do a circle, too, perfect circle, perfect straight line, no mistakes. Like the technique is so down in his muscle memory. Right. Me, it's about muscle I'm, memory. I'm getting, sure. I'm getting bitter, but I still make mistakes, and you gotta correct, or you, your yeah. line didn't hit exactly where you wanted it, or you didn't even get the right line, or you're so tired after a day of filling that the lines don't come it out as crazy. Crisp. Yeah. Like after that, it's like Fatigue. okay, I'm doing my black line, and okay, yeah. that's good enough. But if you really wanna be excellent, yeah. you gotta kind of like, no, I'm gonna really concentrate all the time. Uh, seems like you're doing good with that, but also in a loose way that uh, it's okay if it's kind of messy because that's yeah. kind of like your vibe. And that's kind of how I like made my style on purpose. Okay. Because I, I used to like really try to like make things perfect. And that was like became such this like torturous process. It really dawned on me one time I was doing a show with my friend... Um, you heard of like uh, MSG uh -huh. from Miami? Yeah. I did a show with my friend Hoxo and Pucho from MSG. Yeah, no. And I remember Hoxo. this line, Pucho said we were in this gallery in, uh, in Charlotte actually doing this show together. And he goes, you really like to punish yourself. And I was like, damn. I was like, yeah, I do. Like uh, subconsciously, I like punish myself. Why did he say that? Because I was just like really like, tediously making things you know like making it harder maybe than it had to be uh -huh. so then uh that that was one of those things that like things that you people say that just stick with you simple things and i was like dude fuck it i'm just gonna start because i was already kind of on this path but then i was like dude i'm just gonna be like but what hoxo does is a totally different combination oh, him yeah. is all about like cap tricks that works really beautifully right. for his portals that he does yeah. Uh, but like, say if you're going for cleanliness, you gotta kind of like put in the time to clean, clean, clean. Yeah. I've seen artists that are all about the impeccability and I'm like, whoa, they're putting in like an extra day or two to really get that shit so fucking clean. And that's what it's all about. At yeah. the end of the day, like people are going to be seeing this mural perhaps for years and people are like, wow, that's killer. So that extra day or two, right. you know, matters for a better piece of art yeah. and does it matter if you put a couple extra days not late after like on the, when you're doing it you're maybe like Ugh, this shit's annoying but yeah depends what you want to deliver yeah also sometimes i guess like it doesn't matter sometimes it does yeah sometimes like that little bit of extra is like the cherry on top that will really set the piece off because i know you've seen we've all seen like pieces where you're like man if they just 
you can just tell by look, being an artist, you can tell by looking at it. You're like, man, if they just did like a little bit more time on that, it would have really brought it to that next level. Right. So like, you know, it's like kind of like a give and take with that. So in that, me as an artist, I can perhaps judge it or qualify it as like, okay, that artist is not that experienced. Right. And, you know, like. Uh, you can sense, it's like a spidey sense. Right. Well, you're like, oh, they, they didn't. You know, they didn't go all the way, you know, right. they take it deeper or they're not there yet yeah. knowing that they should have uh, taken it deeper. And, you know, we all deserve those walls to learn on, too. Like, right. it's not like a bad thing. And then you can get really clean and be like, you know what? This is just annoying. I want to take it and go and make it kind of dirty on purpose. But mm -hmm. if it still looks dope, right. like, for example, like artists like Picasso or you know, uh, even Basquiat, which I believe you're a fan of. That's a good you example know, of that, that dirty. That, yeah, shit got fucking messy, dirty, yeah. but it was so good at the same time. Exactly. Because it was like pure vibes. Yeah. There's a, pure originality. It's crazy. It's hard to almost explain. It's like you can tell when looking at someone's art, if they're doing like a style like similar to mine, where it's kind of like almost like naive or dirty. You can almost tell if like they do have experience and could paint better if they wanted in like a traditional sense, mm -hmm. which like I can tell because I can do it. So like, I don't know, it's like sometimes you see people painting kind of messy and you're like, you don't have the same respect for it in your mind because you're like, you know that they couldn't paint yeah. traditionally better if they wanted to. It's, right. I don't know how to explain that. There's no. probably like a word for that. Yeah, no. Or a term I, or something. I don't But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. It's but, weird how you can tell by, like, you're like, they're being kind of messy and sloppy on purpose. Right. And that makes it, like, cool again in my head. Yeah. Right. Because there is that style in, in, in spray painting. Like, when I started doing spray painting, I wasn't good technically. Right. And, uh, but I had style because I, I, I had right. worked out my style on a canvas. So you pull so, it off. So when I went to the mural, yeah. I had a cool style, but my lines were off, my shading. Uh, like you could see, like, uh, I, I didn't master the cans yet. Right. But the style could carry it. Yeah. And then it was just like a, a progression exactly. of, of, yeah. of getting my can control down. And now that it's down and I know I can go clean. If I want to, I could just make it really messy and dirty. And sometimes when it's like a quick fish bomb around the world, I got to go quick. And as long as it looks dope, yeah. that's all that matters. Right. Because like it's, it's the style that carries it. And I know, and I'm not trying to prove it onto anybody, that, you know, I got my uh, uh, technique down. If yeah, you got your technique down. You and got you, your style down. And you got yeah. your style down, and you got your technique down, and you can go messy and still make it look clean. Because when yeah. I look at your mural from far away, it looks like, oh, look at the shadows, and he's got the colors right. right. And then you, when you come close, it's like, oh, shit, this is like a really messy line. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> this is like, you know, really yeah. well thought out. Yeah, there's like a, that's, that's so fun to me, man. I love that. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I, w I used to think it was like, if you just get the colors and stuff and it like about the right area, you show to people subconsciously that you know what you're doing. Uh -huh. But it doesn't have to be perfect and it still uh -huh. gives the same effect. Right. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you're uh, having fun with your juxtapositions of styles, yeah. colors, messages. Um, Tell me about your, your, your clients. Like, where do you paint murals? You paint murals for uh, perhaps uh, local head shops or at music festivals or parties. Like, what's mm. your clientele like? Uh, my clientele is mostly um, people that just like to have fun. So it could be like, you know, just like a random citizen or a corporation or really anyone that kind of wants to have fun with my pieces because I feel like uh, the more fun I have making it, the more that will kind of like come through to the person seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you and I was looking for the name of the, of the party because oh. uh, I saw some videos of you doing these really crazy rave parties. What was it called? Dreamland? Oh, or Slumberland. Slumberland. I didn't write it yeah. down, so I was like, where is the name of this thing? Uh, is that like a, like, first of all, where is that? It looks crazy. Yeah. And, uh, is that like a kind of party you do often or is that a one-off or is, like, is that the scene that you so, go to? I mean, it might be uh, a yearly thing, like an annual thing right now. So it's kind of like in conjunction with EDC, 
uh, Orlando, the okay. Electric Daisy mm -hmm. Carnival. So basically, it's like a hotel uh, that you st you can stay there and also kind of be like a secondary festival to that. So uh, it's when like you a leave, line? yeah, uh. you leave EDC, it's like another festival you can stay at the same at. time or yeah, after at the same time. Oh whoa! So you because wake there's up. Such, there's such a yeah. big population for EDC. You wake up if you did go to sleep and then <gasps> party. You know, go to EDC, come back because the EDC is over at like you know midnight or uh, something like that. So you come back or so maybe the, one or something. So when area is like jacked up on yeah, like, you, you don't know, want the party to be done. At, on Molly, they're even like, a, we at two o'clock, the party ain't done. When you're like, oh, so it's like an after party on whatever people are on at EDC, and you come back, and then now there's like parties going till the morning, or like uh -oh. the music goes till like three or five or something, depending where it is. And then even after that, then there's like the renegade like sets that are happening in like, you know, uh -huh. different hotel rooms or people are throwing. So like, you don't have to sleep if you don't want to. You could just party all night or whatever. Right. So that was something I got involved with, with um, really it was like my lady's like baby daddy. Okay. Which is like kind of wild to me to start with. I was like, so like he was kind of, having these these parties or whatever, doing the same type of thing with this other guy. They had kind of a falling out and he wanted to make a new thing and he liked my art and he was like, yo, would you be interested in like, you know, doing the art for, you know, this type of hotel festival idea? Uh -huh. And, you know, initially I was kind of like, ah, I don't know. And then, you know, and then I was like, you know, fuck it. Like the benefits are there. Rayma kind of like also kind of talked me into it. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it, dude. Like, let's design like this crazy hotel party. Like, So what did that entail? Uh, like, I, is it like murals or installations, sculptures? Yeah, just stuff like this. Like, this is part of it. What this, is this? This is like a piece. This was actually a nipple, a nipple cover. Uh-huh. Made out of um, high density styrofoam and then it's hard coated. Uh, and so, painted, I painted it. So you, you grab a big chunk of styrofoam and you yeah. cut it or how does this yeah. work? You do the arms and stick it or? Yeah, my buddy, um, he's actually like a really well-known like sculptor school. His name's Kumpa. Uh -huh. He schooled me on like, you know, the idea of like, I was coming to him actually, I met at a live painting thing. Uh, I was painting like a truck and he was painting a sidewalk. Like neither of us were doing sculpture. And we started kind of like talking. He was like a really cool dude. He's, he's Thai. Um, and uh, I started showing him. I was like, yo, I have all these like other ideas or whatever, the things I want to do. And I found out he was a sculptor. And he's like, yo, come by my studio. I had all these like furniture pieces I wanted to make. And he's like, yo, come by. I'll show you how to like make whatever you want out of foam. Uh -huh. And then that's when I kind of like realized like this whole world opened up of like theme parks and everything that is actually made of foam. I didn't realize like with all, probably fiber all, plastic. Yeah, uh, fiber yeah, glass yeah. it could top? be fiberglass. It could be um, with a, if you like had the these, proper budget. These resin hard coats. Right. Like there's there's a few different techniques to make it hard. Uh -huh. But then you know when you go to like Harry Potter world or you know Disney or whatever, like all these big sculptures are foam a lot of the times. Maybe with like an armature inside. Uh -huh. And then you know they're hard coated and painted. I didn't like realize like holy shit. I was like I can make anything. Uh -huh. with foam or like you know big as i want it doesn't have to be like metal or so wood. once again did you carve this or did you just kind of like spit some foam out of some can that created these shapes and then polish it no 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 this is all this is all carved right from a block i'll show you there's like a it's like big blocks of styrofoam uh-huh and they're a little bit more dense than like a normal styrofoam that would be like in a packing when you take it out of like a tv uh, package it's a little more like uh, dense I got gotcha. But you can still use that. And you can cut it with a knife? Yeah, you can take it like a knife. And Koopa showed me all these techniques of like, you know, uh, sawing at it with like a knife or like saw blades or, you know, however, you, whatever, any means right. necessary you needed to get the shape. And then you sand it and you'll get the exact shape you want. Cool. So you made all these sculptures for that party. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Did they pay, pay well for all that work? So, I mean... It was like a first year thing. So, I mean, it maybe didn't get as paid as well as I would have liked to because I was kind of more in it for, um, you know, what's the experience, exposure. Yeah, that and, you know, invested more uh, percentage wise. 
So that was like more of like a risk on my part, you know, just to take that. So, um, you know, hopefully like next year it will do like a little bit better. And uh -huh. I think it will because you kind of like for a first year, especially a festival, you kind of have to like prove yourself. Right. And, you know, it wasn't like a full festival either. It was like a hotel. Right. It's like a proof of festival. concept. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think next year people are going to be like, damn, that shit was so cool last year. And, you know, then I'll bring like a bunch of new things I'm doing this year that I, we, you know, couldn't maybe didn't have the budget to do this the first time or right. afford, you know, to be able to do. Uh -huh. So I did as do I did as much as my little heart could fucking do for, for the this pleasure thing. of doing for, some beautiful art. For not that much. Uh -huh. of, money to even make it and like you uh -huh. know i called out all the all the homies and favors of like yo like help me do this fucking make this shit as cool as possible and like you'll at least be able to go and have fun uh -huh. like, maybe not get paid right. <laughs> but like you know just for the experience of it yeah. was it worth it in the end yeah for sure yeah, yeah nice a lot, of, a lot of good things like because then you like you know how like you at least have like that to show that you can do that thing so I have a lot of jobs like that where like maybe uh -huh. I don't make that much money because I, I blow the whole budget on making it as cool as possible just to kind of prove to myself and prove to people that I could like do something like that. Uh huh. Well, it seems like you're always coming up with original uh, concepts yeah. and by doing it, you prove that you can do it and hopefully yeah. somebody else wants to invest in, and, and make it to the next level. Tell me about your artistic inventions. It seems like you got all these like quirky, <laughs> little <laughs> concepts like your sunglasses that are two little doors or two little windows that yeah. open up. Um, tell me a little bit about that. And what's your, your favorite ones? Uh, my favorite ones of my inventions? Probably my, a lot of my favorite ones I probably haven't even made yet, dude. I have like fucking, I mean, I'll show you later when you're done. Like, right. Sketchbooks are just like, Silly shit that are like uh -huh. so fun. I mean, dude, the window glasses, one of my favorite things, though. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite things. The face silhouette shirt. Um, it's hard to think, like, right on the spot of, like, my favorite. Type yeah, of you, you shared a video recently on your Instagram where I made like a little thing. Life yeah. and art, and there was all these really cool, inventions. quirky inventions. Yeah. That you had, and you're like, oh, the basketball so hat was one of my favorite. Uh huh. Instead of like a brim, is like a basketball hoop that I've got from actually like a Publix or something. They sell these little like basketball hoops in the aisles. Uh -huh. And I was like, damn, that'd be so cool if that was like the brim of a hat. You could like uh -huh. put basketball and like shoot them at people's heads and shit. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys want to show a clip of that real quick. Yeah, Paulina will <laughs> put all the B roll about this stuff. Throw it to the clip, Paulina. <laughs> you know, she'll, can we she'll, say that? She'll. she'll you can say it if you want, but she'll naturally, uh, do it anyway. okay. by the way, Paulina Casati, my girlfriend, she's the new editor of the show. Woo! Paulina, get in the, throw, just, get in the clip real quick. She'll, she'll stay in the back. Paulina's cool as hell. Hi. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> All right. Paulina's back here holding it down behind the scenes. If anything, I'll take More a little, the camera. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little clip of behind the scenes with Paulina. Yo. I'm gonna do um, a but uh, a behind the scenes, behind the scenes with Chris and Paulina. This yeah. is live right now. This is oh live, live and direct. Holy shit, my hair looks crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised your microphone is still picking up anything. It's very. I know it's all muffled. Yeah. Speaking of uh, hair, though, how'd you get your hair to look so like nice and like fluffy and curved like that? I don't know. I think Did it's, you do that? You had to. You worked on it a little bit, didn't you? No. You just, woke up like that? I wake up like that. Yeah, it's weird. I, I haven't had a short hair since I was, I don't know, 16 years old. I'm okay. 44 almost now. You used so, to have dreadlocks, right? I used to have dreadlocks. So maybe I think the dreadlocks got used to always like spinning into all these dreads. And now when it's growing, it's kind of like spinning into some, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> it just grows up like Marge Simpson, right? Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps going up. <laughs> I, I'm figuring it out. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with my hair these days. No, it looks nice. It, it looks nice, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm being a, like a normal human, kind of. Um, so back to your art. Is there like some <laughs> kind of uh, general direction or goal you got with it? Or you're just following your intuition and doing things as they arrive into your uh, inspiration? I guess like the ultimate goal would be to like have some type of like community 
like, um, you know, like a hybrid of like a community mixed with like a theme park kind of idea. It was like what I would really like to do. Mm -hmm. So like maybe like design some like buildings or apartments or right. hotels and some rides and almost like incorporate them together. Right. So like don't that. bite that if you also like, if you have the way to do that really quick, or like just wait for me to do it a little bit or maybe help me do it. Right. Com <laughs> so let's work uh, together on that. Don't just bite that. This is the right man for the job. And if anything, Meow Wolf, don't sleep on oh, uh, St. Petersburg. Oh, so fucking great. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd be great for a Meow Wolf room or, or, or little area. And yeah. I, I think we got a friend who's going to do her own version of that in St. Petersburg. So we'll connect you oh, with really? uh, our friend Entity Sam. Oh, no. Uh, Entity Holler at me. Where you at? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, let's hope it works. I also dream of the day I can do a room at uh, Meow Wolf, you know, yeah. in my own style. A bunch of broken skateboards and... Yeah, you know, dude, that would be like so cool. Video game, toy madness, like. Have you thought about something like that? Like, really? Like. Yeah, I thought about it, but like, I don't know any other than Meow Wolf or how to approach him or how to be like, hey, because I'm sure they have like a million people who go be like, hey, give me a room too. And I yeah. don't want to be like, I'm going to kind of like wait till like, oh, we know Chris Dyer. We like his work. Let's see if he's down to do something with us. Uh, mm. Till then, I'm busy with everything else. But uh, yeah, hopefully one day these yeah. things manifest for us. Yeah. So, Sebastian, tell me about your family life because you're an artist and uh, you have a partner. Is she your wife or a uh, girlfriend? I mean, not technically. Yeah, yeah. I guess girlfriend. But yeah, yeah I mean, we're together. So. And you have three kids. Once again, yeah. like I don't know if technically or for real, but. Yeah, no, we don't have any kids together. So I had two kids from like my previous uh -huh. relationship and she has her kid. So, I mean, now we're kind of like a blended family in that sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. How is it living from your art and supporting a family of five? Hmm. It's, it's pretty fun. It can be challenging sometimes, you know, also the balance of it. You know, it can be, you know, but I found like, you know, I've had a lot of practice since, you know, my kids are seven and eight now. So I have many years to kind of like more refine the balance of that. Cause there's times where it was like, I mean, I was working too much and it wasn't working enough. And now it's like a, a pretty good balance of like, I'm pretty, you know, I try to be with my kids as much as possible and like be influencing them positively and, you know, helping them see the world in a way with like without boundaries and like things that maybe like we grew up with like many boundaries and like not a lot of people saying like you can just do whatever you want like that's also an option like i never heard that growing up so i'm just like really enforcing that with my kids i'm like yeah but like you could just kind of like do whatever it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you have fun so you know i try to you know, be with them like during the day when they go to bed, I'll work on the weekends, like when they're with their mother, that's also work time, you know, things like that to like balance it and really be there for them. And, you know, so it's be, not like a really fun, cool, great dad that's there for you. And also when I'm not there, the next time you come over, you're seeing like all this crazy shit I made and like being like, oh shit, like you can just do whatever with life. Like that's what uh -huh. I want to like show them. Right. Well, I think that's very uh, courageous to continue doing your own uh, dream and your kid life. Because yeah. I think artists are just kids that allow themselves to continue playing. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and, and holding space for the kids. But, you know, I find like you must feel and be very abundant mm -hmm. to manifest like a nice studio like this, a nice house, a mm -hmm. nice family. Wow. Yeah. Doing this crazy art thing. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to push uh, your own limits of yeah. what you can create, not even knowing if you can make money out of it. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. It's I just kind of trust in like the whole like direction and like I guess like you know, universe or you know whatever it is, I just kind of like have faith in that like it'll work. Some kind of spiritual guidance. Yeah, I don't know really what it is. It's just kind of like uh, I just like maybe it's because I don't really like worry too much, uh -huh. and I'm just like nah, like it'll like it'll work out. Like whatever it is, like if I just keep doing what I'm supposed to do, which is like making art, and you know, 
being a good dad and like being there for people, the kids, the community, people who like need things like art in their daily life to maybe like help them get through their life. Like if I just keep doing that type of stuff, it'll work out somehow. And it just keeps working out somehow. So like I just keep doing it. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know how it's working out, but it is. Uh -huh. It's crazy. Like looking back, especially looking back, you're like, damn dude, like if I would have thought, you know, when I first started, like quitting my job, sleeping on my friend's couch, that one day it would just like kind of work out. It's like I kind of had the feeling it would, but like knowing that, like looking back, it is pretty wild. But, like, yeah, like, damn, it actually worked out. Uh -huh. Maybe it's because I just wanted it to, and I believed it would. Right. You're a powerful man. All right, so where are we at? Huge art group orgies. <laughs> Fucking with art? Uh, no, they're not an orgy of any kind. <laughs> sounds cool though. <laughs> sounds cool. Sounds very messy though. <laughs> um, so you were telling me about your if you had a spiritual belief mm, or okay. knowing or guidance that helps you cruise through the unknowns of being an artist and trying new things and running a family and a business. Yeah, I guess one thing that happened um, when I was about eight, eight or nine years old, I was in my room and I just had this like vision of like, it's almost like, I don't know if it was just from things I'd seen before or something, because it's kind of like stereotypical, I feel like, that like this vision of just like all these like cameras taking pictures of me and it's like flashing light type of thing like almost like paparazzi like type of like getting out of like a limo or something like that type of those cameras I had this like vision of that and I was like nine years old and I was like oh shit like I'm gonna be like famous or something mm -hmm. I just like realized that and then since that point I was like trying to always like guess what it would be for and so like at first I was like uh, you know, running through all these things, like, through my childhood, from then to, like, out of high school, I still never thought I would be, like, an artist, even though I always did art and drew through this whole time and made art, I was always, like, thinking maybe I would be, like, a chef, or, like, then I, like, went through, like, the whole, like, being into, like, jackass and, like, that type of stuff, like, you would be, like, a stuntman, or, like, a comedian, or an actor, and, like, the whole time I'm doing art through all this, uh -huh. and then it kind of hit me, like, one day I was like, I should just make art. I was like, I've been doing this the whole fucking time. Maybe I should just be like, art is what I should just do for like, you know, like for my life. So then I just kind of like trusted it and you know, ideas would keep coming to me of like things to make. And that's one thing maybe that like is kind of unexplainable. And maybe you also feel like that is like, you can't really explain what makes you want to do it. It's like, you just feel like you need to be doing art. And like you need to be like making things, and I don't think that this things that like happen for everyone. I don't know if everyone feels like that. Maybe they just don't act on it. I also want. What makes that. you? What makes you like want to do it? It's hard to explain. You're like you just feel like you should. Like I don't know. Look, I can't speak what for what's the experience of being anyone outside yeah. of myself. What but as me, I always felt like oh. There's something special out there. There's like some special juice, and I'm yeah. do something important. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep on being myself and doing my thing, and everything will be fine. But then I'm like, well, is that an arrogant thought mm -hmm. that I'm by being special? Am I thinking I'm any better than anybody else? Or maybe everybody is special, but they don't listen to themselves and feel that they right. just think they're another extra in a movie as opposed to being the star of their movie. Yeah. And what will that hero do? Save the world, do something nice for others, or be a villain, mm -hmm. or be an extra in the back. Like we, I would like to think that we get to choose you know, what role we take on our life by the actions that we do. Yeah. So. What, what makes you, have you ever done DMT and seen something that maybe like gave you a clue about the um, I haven't done DMT a lot. I'd say like, uh, maybe like, any type of, well, mind-enhancing thing that made you 
Give you a clue. Well, that I've done a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I do DMT, or uh, it just What's takes that? me to another dimension. What's this? What's DMT? D DMT. Oh, DMT. Yeah, when you I have done. I have done it, oh, not, yeah. not a lot, but like oh, okay. when I have done it, it actually takes me where ayahuasca takes me many times. Okay. And is this fractal dimension where these beings live in some kind of matrix mm -hmm. that things are okay? They're like a tribe of consciousnesses that live together as one. And they're my friends, what? and they're cheering for me, and I'm <laughs> part of them. Yeah. But then I'm like in this video game, and that all of that is like like right here, right now. But I can't see it because the veil is separating from it. But with the MD, it's like whoop. Then I'm I'm with it, and I'm I'm I am it. And uh, remembering how special it is outside of this virtual reality video game. Reminds me to come back and be like, oh, let's play the game full forcibly. Let's fucking yeah. make some magic. Yeah. You know, let's... What's that look like when you say these, they're cheering for you? What's that like visually? What do you see? Like you see these things and they're like... What I don't they, see entities. I feel them. You feel I them? I never okay. see like a bee with a face or a, okay. uh, the elves as Terrence McKenna would say. I never see like, but I feel them there. Yeah. They're kind of like, they're not even like, they don't have bodies, they're just kind of like souls. And I feel they love me, and they, I feel they want to heal me, so they're like repairing me. While I'm there, they're like fucking shifting things around and, wow. you know, helping me be less crazy. Um, yeah. And uh, whatever healing I can bring upon myself, hopefully it helps me be a better person that then I can bring healing upon others. And then if we're all healing each other, this world or this uh, duality uh, realm can be more tolerable and more enjoyable. Yeah. Um, so that, and yeah, art is one of my tools or weapons, but uh, as much as I consider myself to be an artist, uh, that's not the end all of me. You know, there's more to me and I don't even know what it is I'm finding okay. out. You know? Same as you, I imagine. Yeah. You're still uncovering what's the essence of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for and, sure. And we will find that out. Um, I just try to like stay rooted in the the childlike nature of my like curiosity and exploration of like the world in a way I see mm -hmm. everything um, from you know big uh, outlooks on things to like very small. Like if you have like followed my Instagram page for like many years, you'll see like I'm very interested in like the smaller world of like bugs and like little the little worlds that we often overlook and like you know like those small creatures and like you know seeing like their whole world from their perspective and realizing that like you know above us is like another grand you know world that we can't see because we're also viewing our world from our own platform and our own space and dimension and there's something above us that's probably looking at us like you know, it, it interested and curious about our little world and things that we're moving in, it probably just keeps like spiraling out from like there. And, like, I think we're kind of like a TV show yeah. inside a spaceship. Yeah. Like there's a very large, amazing spaceship on another dimension on a different frequency. Yeah. And all of well, what we live here is like a TV show that they can like tap into, like, oh, yeah. what's happening on Channel Chris? What's happening yeah. on Channel Sebastian? What's was happening that, on Channel Was that, you get that from the, the South Park episode? Uh, they had an episode like that a long really? time ago. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, I, I just saw that once on a, like a, on a mushroom trip, I feel like. Oh, Man, I feel like. My, my life is like, it's like a TV show for some aliens yeah. and humanity humanity is yeah. like a mega TV show and we're on season finale and they're just like biting their nails like ooh what's gonna happen with humanity are yeah. they gonna, gonna self-destroy each other yeah. are they gonna find the healing are they gonna wake up what yeah. will happen you know yeah, looking crazy down there <laughs> right. and, and it's so fractal and there's so many channels through each each one of us is a channel yeah. for that that show uh, or like a different camera angle and a different consciousness trying to figure out the puzzle yeah. and the video game and stuff. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah, that, um, that is wild. Because one thing I do want to say about the DMT, though, why I brought that up was mm -hmm. um, I've always had like, I would stay up 
uh, I mean, I still do. I stay up till like, you know, three, four, five in the morning sometimes when I'm like really kind of trying to come up with like an idea for something. I'll lock in. I'm like something I want to design or create, whether it's clothes or you know, like a building or you know, a mural or interior piece, and I'll stay up. And it always happens around like this, like two to like four a.m. mark. And I always felt like it was because the rest of, like, the world around me was, like, sleeping. Mm -hmm. And that's when these ideas could come through, like, unfiltered mm -hmm. from, like, the universe or something. And I always felt like there was, like, this spiral about 3 a.m. above me. And it would just start. Maybe it's because I'm thinking that it happens. But it would feel like this, like, this universe spiral was, like, coming through, like, a tornado. And it would just, like, spiral in these, like, ideas. And they would, like, hit me. And I still do. Like, they hit me, like, uh, almost with, like, I'm being shocked by, like, lightning or something. And it was, like, boom, this idea would hit. Mm. And then, so one time, I did DMT, and I had this, like, vision of, like, this, like, being. You know, some people say they see, like, these beings. It happened one time. I saw, like, uh, I was, like, laying there, and I saw this, like, massive, like, being that was, like, it seemed like it was, like, ten stories tall from, like, the waist up. And he was, like, and I say he, it was just whatever, just, like, some being. And it was, like, going, it was, like, grabbing. I see his arm reaching for me to, like, what seemed, like, across the horizon, like, far away. It would pick up this, like, little, like, cube or something. And it would, like, bring it all the way back, like, really far. And then they just, like, put it in me. And then, like, reach far again and grab another one. And then put it in me. And then I was, like... I just realized then it was like these ideas. Mm. And I was like, dude, these are like yeah, what I thought. Maybe I just totally made it up in my head, or maybe I really is like a real thing that happens on another dimension, but it felt like something from the universe was like giving me ideas. And right. they, were, they were like gifts. Uh huh. Yeah, I can totally see that being a reality. It's kind of like a yeah. coded download of yeah. concepts. And if we open up and channel from good intentions to other good intention beings in yeah. the universe, uh, hopefully they are able to uh, manifest their concepts through us. We become yeah. the paintbrush in their hands. Yeah. And hopefully these beings are well-intentioned uh, beings that want to help humanity, so then we can become well-intentioned yeah. humans that help humanity through the flavor of art that we bring. Yeah, and I think the, the good intention is probably a big part of it. Because like you said, it was like, we never got into it for the money. Like, I have a friend, uh, I don't know if he'll appreciate me saying this line, but uh, his name's Kevin Brady. He did, like, a lot of this stuff for, like, sculptures, really amazing sculpture. Have you met him? No. Dude, I gotta introduce you guys. So he's, like, has a little place over on Central. Uh -huh. But he did some stuff for, like, the Dali Museum. Very, very talented sculptor and, like, visionary. And he told me one time, he's like, dude, if I got into art for the money, I would have killed myself a long time ago. Uh, and I was like, it, like, I never really thought of it quite like that, but I was like, damn, you're right, bro. I was like, if I would have gotten this for money, like, I would have, like, been sad and depressed. Like, it's not about that. Like, yeah, that's great things that come with it. And obviously, like, I would love to be, like, stupid, rich, and wealthy and be able to make more ideas and things like not just be rich for the fuck's sake of having shit but like just to be able to make things that i want to make right like i think it's gonna happen like i feel like if i want that it'll happen so like right i just want to make cool shit i don't see why not uh same here and life's got its ups and downs and there's lessons in every step right but you know when you know you're destined to do something for humanity nothing can stop you yeah. to at least trying your best yeah. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter because at least you tried and gave it your all and you were happy in that process. Right. Uh, it's not about like, uh, and you never really arrive there. It's not like a goal like, oh, when I do this project for this client, right. then I will be good enough. It just keeps going. Man. You know, there's always the next fucking right. you know, project that makes you happy. And, and, yeah. and it's, uh, I guess, like the combination of all the things you brought into the planet while you were alive yeah. that makes an impact or a ripple. And as long as we're happy, yeah, like, of course, we don't want to be, like, starving, but we're blessed in mm -hmm. these, you know, these beautiful countries that we live in, and we're allowed to fucking paint some trippy shit on a canvas, and, right, and dude, how crazy is that? It is very it's, weird. It's and, wild, man. 
We're very lucky. We're very lucky, dude. Yeah. Like, for real. Like, to be able to just, like, paint crazy, fun shit on a wall and, like, have that be our life. It's and like, people like it. People like us. Uh, yeah. We get invited to these things and do the thing that we love. Uh, the role of the artist is very blessed. As much as it has a lot of hard work right. and challenges. Big time. You don't always get what you want. Right. You know? You fail many times. And mm. that's just part of it. And you yeah. have to be resilient through it. And you gotta be grateful through the bad times too. Yeah, exactly. That's just life. Um, tell me a little bit. Um, I was talking about your family and then we got into the whole conversation of the abundance. But um, does your family participate in your art making? Or is it like a separate entity? Does your partner Raima uh, become part of your art or expression? Um, Do you keep right. family and art separate, or or is it all kind of ble bleed in a little bit? Um, I mean it's it's separate a lot of the times. And maybe when I go off and like do projects and things, it'll be like maybe without the family. But it definitely does bleed over, and we definitely mutually like inspire each other for sure. Like I feel like. I will see things like, you know, like, we'll be, I'll be drawing with my kids and see things they're doing and, like, really, like, feel that and be able to, like, that's the biggest blessing of really having, like, my kids for the art sake side of it is, like, the blessing is being able to, like, see the world through a child's eyes again, which is so big, dude, like, uh, just, like, seeing, they, seeing things, like, they're inspired by and the way they look at the world, it, it, I've already kind of look at the world, like, as much as a child as I can, but when you like re see it through their eyes, you're like, oh yeah, like that's what it's like to like really see that for the first time, and like then you like hit you, and you're like, oh my god, like that is a really like, beautiful way to look at something. But yeah, I think we like definitely inspire each other, and you know, I draw with my kids all the time. We do like little like art projects. Um, they definitely they come out like if I do a like, mural off site or something, they'll come out and. Uh, you know, check it out. Sometimes I'll let them like paint a little bit, but I mean, there's a little bleed over and blending and stuff as far as that's concerned. But you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, Papa's like making some like crazy shit, and that's just like kind of what he does. And, like, so it's not like you're training them to be artists themselves. Yeah, I mean, I definitely am as far as like uh, making art and stuff. I definitely will like push stuff and like try to like get them to explore their own creativity and you know, give them like tools to like try things that I never got to try when I was their age and you know, things that I didn't discover until like, maybe high school like mm. clay or you know different like mediums like that I'll, I'll just be like I do feel like that's like the one probably the biggest blessing that maybe I will give them is like you know being able to like explore different types of like mediums and try things out and even if it's not directly like a visual art like even like music because I never really had that either like music growing up like instruments or anything so I'll be like you know getting like random instruments or things to be music or anything to express themselves so I mean I feel like that's I don't know if that's gonna like I feel like it'll help them I feel like, you know having like little things like that that you gotta try and like think back to what in my childhood I didn't have exposure to that I probably would have liked and you guys uh, started uh, raising squirrels recently too, right? Yeah, dude. So, you know, this is Florida. We got we got hurricanes coming through here every once in a while. And the last past one, I think it was like Ian. Mm -hmm. Were you here for that? It was before right. you got here. It's like a week before I moved. Here. Yeah, yeah. So that one came, and we were actually kind of out like playing around in the storm, me and my kids. And I saw this like big, uh, like a almost looked like a tumbleweed. In the front yard, it was like by the sidewalk, and I was like, "That's got to be a nest of something." Like I couldn't tell it was a ball. I never seen a nest quite like it, and I, I kind of broke it open, and there was like this pink little thing. It was like a baby animal. I was like, I couldn't tell if it was a bird, you know, a raccoon. I didn't know what the hell it was. It was just a pink little no. It had just been born. Fetus, almost. You know, yeah. and like. That squirrel got unlucky, dude. No, so we found this, it ended up being a baby squirrel. And the wildest part was we had just kind of became friends with our neighbor across the street, this girl, Allie. 
And she came out and saw us like out in the storm. She's like, yeah, like, what are you guys doing? Whatever. Cause it looked like we were like looking for something. Cause I could hear another one. I heard the squeak and we were trying to look for this other baby squirrel. So, and I was like, yeah, we found a baby squirrel. And it was so windy and like chaotic. She didn't hear me. She was like, yeah, I rehab baby squirrels. I was like, no, like we found a baby squirrel. And we just kept saying that back and forth for a minute. I was like, no, like we have one. And she's like, oh my God, like I rehab them. So she ended up having like everything you needed to raise a baby squirrel, which was like this crazy, like uh -huh. coincidence, you know, of, like it was meant to be, you know, for sure. And she had like, you know, baby nipples and like uh -huh. heaters and, you know, everything we needed. So she like let us borrow all this stuff and we ended up raising this like infant days old baby squirrel to you know mature baby squirrel lives out in the yard now and then we got another one uh when it was like a child to kind of be with it from another rehabber because they i guess they do better when they're they're supposed to be raised in groups you know like little like you know uh -huh. sets of you know babies so that they learn so they're out in the yard now and yeah, we're we're squirrel parents now that's just really fun all right well we're coming to the end of our show. Uh, would you have some final words of wisdom or some, um, you know, advice to young artists who might be tuning into this uh, this interview? All right, so young artist, if you're tuning into this interview and you don't know, like maybe what you want to do or what direction to go with things, I would just say just trust in what you believe. Don't listen to anybody else even if it's like your closest loved ones that have your best interests in mind they just love you and they're telling you not to do things don't listen to them and just do what you feel is right in your heart no matter what even if you gotta be you know struggle for a little bit to do it or if you don't that's great but like yeah just do what you do what you gotta do and just trust in yourself because like i feel like the mind is like a very uh calculated computer in the sense of like um don't second guess yourself because your brain's calculating these things faster than you can really comprehend and like the things that you think that you should do you should be doing not second guessing them and don't listen to you know because i i had that struggle for a while with like my parents when i was like i'm gonna go gather up all this free paint for like these uh chemical spots and you know paint big murals for free and you know of course a parent is going to be like, why well, you should be getting paid. Why are you doing this stuff for free? And it's like, well, yeah, but like, I just feel like I need to do it. I need to prove to everyone and myself that I can do these things. And then the jobs will come and the money will come from it. But you have to prove it. Uh -huh. And you have to like figure it out. And you have to do these things that you feel are like that you should do. And it's hard not to, if someone that really loves you, it's hard not to like take that into consideration. But like, you have to like, Tell them to like fuck off, you know, maybe not verbally, but they like fuck off, like do, like don't listen to that, like do your thing. Right, totally. I almost uh, think like, I, I don't know if, uh, if, does your brand have a name or is it just Sebastian Kuhn? It's just Sebastian Kuhn. Okay, but if you ever had a brand name, I think PLC would be perfect for you. Proof, proof of concept. Yeah. yeah, now let's prove like, yeah, yeah, let's prove that anything can be done. You yeah, know? Like, I don't even have to do the project. I just want to prove to you that I yeah, can do exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the big thing is like, just honestly, if you really get to yourself, you can do it. Uh -huh. And like, you know, that's the main thing is like, just do it for you. Like, just have fun, and other people will feel that. Like when they see it, they'll they'll feel like someone had fun doing it. Just like you know, when I look at art, I can tell like. Someone had fun doing that, you know, if I feel it, you know, I don't know how to explain that, but you can feel it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so the interview is done now. You want to go to that, art, uh, that toy store close by here? Yeah, we'll go check out the toy store and yeah. maybe check out some comics, maybe pick something up. We'll see what's going on. What, what are you into in that store? That store has a lot. Dude, you want to see real quick? Um, I brought some shit in here. Sure. This is my like favorite little like stash right here mm -hmm. of comics and stuff I'm into, and then you'll maybe get like a little feel for like my whole style. So like, R. Crumb, right? Big influence, right? Uh, so I have a lot of like early Crumb. This is like 1968. Oh, they're like, you know, all these like random mag, you know, 
underground <laughs> comics from you know back in the day. This is my favorite stuff. Ball yeah. Pores, Snatch. I actually got this from the comic book comic book store across the street. It's uh-huh. Biffy. Wow. Gasm. Yeah, I got a bunch Mr. of like, Na- Natural. Yeah, Mr. Natural. All the, Ooh, this all the one, This one's a super classic. Yeah, actually, I just got that from the store across the street. They had a fifty percent off sale, so that's where we're gonna go. Right twenty now. bucks? So you bought this for twenty bucks? Yeah, I got that for twenty bucks yeah. across the street. That's great. I yeah. would want this for my fucking wall. This is like such a classic. Yeah, bro. And, uh, my friend Mark Henson uses this uh, this one for his uh, slideshow. Really? Yeah, he shows that one. Yeah, these are great. Oh, yeah. old zap. Yeah, bro, check it out. I wanted to show you this shit. Mm-hmm. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for yeah, dude, for checking it out. Also, I found this um, tire swing on the side of the road. I wanted to like let's, push, maybe push each other in. Let's check it out. Let's go to the comic, uh, comic book <laughs> shop, toy store on a tire swing with wheels on it. Yeah, uh, let's go. And uh, uh, let me say bye to these these homies who've been watching. Hi, if you're still watching, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like the the episode. That helps the algorithm. Even better, comment. What do you think of Sebastian? What do you think of his art? What do you think of his words? Uh, how about you share it on Facebook and all these other places? And obviously, you're already a subscriber, but if you haven't, please do that. I am working really hard to do these beautiful interviews with awesome artists, and I'll see you next time. Blessings! Much Woo! love, everybody. Thank you. Yo, yo, yo. Next episode, Satsang! Watch what happens to your relationship, particularly with your partner. <laughs> when you know how to be vulnerable and soft and open, you know, it's like I see so many relationships that that hit walls or fail and split because this pride thing says like, nope, I'm not opening. I won't do it. Like I'm standing my ground. It's like, no man, open up and see what happens. You know, like we'll crack you wide open. So please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Big thanks and see you next episode. Peace.